Welcome to another how-to tutorial from Teachers First. Today we're going to learn how to build a Symbaloo lesson plan from scratch. Hello, we're going to take a look at how to create and build your own Symbaloo lesson plan. This is the second video in a series. The first video takes a look at the other way to work with lesson plans and that is you, by using the marketplace to start with a plan someone has already created and modify it for your own needs. So if you want information on that, be sure to check out the other video. To begin, we need to either create an account or log in. I'm going to go ahead and log in at Lesson Plan Simulu. And when I log in, it brings me to my start screen and you'll see up at the top left, we have two areas, my lesson plans, or marketplace. We're going to be working in here at my lesson plans to create our own lesson plan. Under here you'll see a list of lessons you've saved or created and any assignments you may have already uh, given out to your students. So if I go here to this blue bar you'll see the plus sign to create a lesson plan and I click on that and it gives me my starting point. This is where we put in our title, information, objectives, and we can even give it a suggested time frame. And as it says, don't worry if you don't know everything right now, you can always come in and edit it later. So we're going to call this one voting and elections. And one tip before you even get to this point is to really think about how you're going to create your game board. Are you going to have all students follow the same path or are you going to have choices for students because how you plan this is what you need to think about as you're mapping things out on your board and you'll see that as we go along. So under here I could put a description of my lesson plan learn about the election process in the United States and I'm going to add a couple of objectives. I will learn about oh, the Electoral College and I click Add Objective and I'm going to put I will learn about the parties represented in elections. And for now, I'm going to say that this should take approximately 60 minutes. Again, I can change this later. And then I'm going to save my settings. And you'll see I have a game board. You can kind of see it right here. It goes across. As I move my cursor, I can decide where to put my start, my home page. So I'm just going to put it right up here at the corner. And when I do that, this is where my starting point to put information. You'll see that I have all kinds of choices here. I can put my title, and then I can choose from teacher instructions. I can put a web page. I can search for a web page. I can search for video. I can search for an article. I can search a Symbaloo web mix. If you're already using Symbaloo, you can pull things right in from a Symbaloo web mix you already have. I can insert an embed code, and you'll find those on different pages. It might be something like a Padlet where you're going to insert an embed code. It might be an image you find on a site. Sometimes the newspaper sites will allow you to embed something like that. I can attach a file. This could be an image. It might be a PDF document you already have. Something that's on your computer. I can insert a math formula. Or I can even create a drawing or graph. For our purposes, we're looking at just how to build this, how to put this together. So for now, I'm just going to put practice because I'm going to make placeholders as I build 
my game and then as I put content in. You'll see down here I can add questions and I have choices. I can do multiple choice, short answer, several different choices and I can set my arrows. Right now my only two options are to the right or to the bottom because I'm in that top left corner so these are lightly grayed out. I can also click in the middle if when I'm finished that this is going to be my endpoint, but I'm not going to do that now. If I want all students to start out together with the first few things, I just want to make one arrow. And I, so I'm going to click that one to the right. I'm going to save this. And you'll see now this yellow line leads to the tile to the right of it. I can't even put anything below here. It's not an option because I haven't allowed that when I created this. So now I can add a tile here and this is something I want all my students to see. So again I'm going to put practice as a placeholder but this might be an excellent place to maybe put in some questions. Maybe a pre-assessment question. So I might put in here a multiple choice question and I'll say maybe which of these is not one of the major political parties in the United States. And the correct answer is going to go here. So I'm going to say wig. I'm going to add choices, Republican and Democrat. And then I'm going to save. And you'll see here that there's a mortarboard cap here. And that tells me it's a question. And I want all my students to do that. Now I've saved that, but from here I, and here's the question that I have now. If I click on it, it shows. But I actually, from here, once students are done with this, I want students to choose an activity. So to do that, right now this arrow is only pointing to the right. You can see here the line only goes to the right, but I'm going to add another line here underneath. Now I'm going to save. So now I can add activities at either end. So right here, again, I'm going to put practice because I'm just holding a placeholder, but I want students to have the option of either playing a game or watching a movie. Now I can go here and search videos and put elections, but it may get a little bit confusing, a lot to, a lot to watch. So one of the easier things to do is just to insert a web page, find a link that you already like. This is one I've already saved. I'm going to copy the URL and I'm just going to insert that web page right there. I'm going to keep the arrow to the right for now and save it. So now you see here's our practice. If I open this up you'll see the video shows right in that bar when when someone is playing the game when they've entered it. And of course, games give choices and different things happen, so it, it's really a good way you're differentiating, but you're also giving choices along the way, which makes it more fun for students. Now on this tile, I want to edit this tile, and I want to allow them to play this iCivics game that I've saved. So again, I copy the code. I'm going to put in a web page just like I did before. I'm going to paste and I'm going to go ahead and leave this right arrow for now because I want the students to get to a point where they're all going to do something together again. So I'm going to save this. Oops, wants me to put that in there, a title, practice. And again, I'm just putting practice as I'm saving things along the way. So you'll see our game board is filling up, but that's why it's important you really think about the choices you want students to have and what you want to make sure they do all together. Because I've got this article I want everybody to read. So what I'm going to do is go back into this one that I've saved as one of the choices for the video. 
I'm going to click Edit, and I'm going to change the direction arrow to Down. And I'm going to take away this right one because I want them, everybody, to do the same thing. Again, I'm going to save. Now when I add this tile, you'll see everybody's going to end up here. And again, I'm putting practice just for my placeholder, but I have this article I want everybody to read. So I'm going to grab the URL for that. And I'm going to insert that web page again. And then I may want to give them some choices once they've done that. So I'm going to let them go either up or down. I'm going to save again. And now you see that they've had the choice right here. They could have watched a video or they could have played a game. But when they're finished, everybody's going to read this article. Now I can make more decisions as I add more tiles as to how students are going to proceed. Are they going to have a choice again or are they going to finish? Some things you might want to look at as you're creating. You can always go and edit your settings here. This blue bar here is a great place for making changes. If I need to edit my settings right here, easy place to go and I can change the objectives, I can change the description, whatever I want to do. Here is where I can add tags where if I'm going to save and add to the marketplace, I'll add grade level, I might add tags and subject. This is a fun one here. This is where I can change themes. The standard theme is this first one with the blue box around it. You can use one that Symbaloo has shared here, or you can upload something and use what you want. So if I'm making an election one, I've saved to my desktop, and I'm going to save this flag. So I'm going to open that, make sure the blue box is around it, save the theme, and you'll see the flag shows up here and also when I do my preview and it opens in a new new uh, tab you'll see the flag shows up behind the game board it's transparent behind the game board but you'll see it you'll see the progress bar you'll see all the things that you've added and when students get ready to play they just click start to begin now some things you can do within the tiles I'm going to go to this question tile and edit it. When I add things such as a file, I can add an image and you'll see I've already played around with one. I'm going to delete that for now so you can see me do that. So I can upload a file and you can kind of make it a bit more interesting. So from my computer, I'm going to choose a file and I want to add a little bit of a thumbs up. Now one big tip to look at, when I look at this, you can see the image and the image size. The dimension of this one is 626 by 626. I've got another thumbs up saved. The dimensions are 95 by 100. This is a more appropriate size. If I put in something as large as a 626 by 626, it really doesn't fit in the tiles well. So take a look at what you're adding if you're adding any icons or images and look at the size and make sure that they look good. So once it's uploaded and you've saved it, I'm going to go back to this question tile and you can take a look and you'll see there's the little thumbs up. Now if you uploaded one that's too big, it just takes over the whole tile. So you can add anything you want here to change just to give it a, a bit of a better look if you'd like. So those are little things you can add on as you get familiar. But just in review, keep in mind some tips for creating your lesson plan board. Really think in advance about how you want your students to proceed. I really like the idea of mapping out your board with practice tiles before you start adding things, put in the common things first 
things that you know you want all students to do. And once you've done that, then you can start thinking about what to include in the different paths along the way. And when you're ready to finish, you can click on any of these tiles. Remember, you can add the flag and you can have students finish at different points. So for this one, this group of students that chose this might finish sooner because they had longer, maybe more complex tasks, tasks to do, where my other students that choose to go down may have another thing or two to complete before they finish. And because there's not a lot on here quite yet, and if this is all I'm going to do, I might want to go to this grid size tool and get rid of some of those extra columns. And to click on that, the ones that the tiles you're using show up in white. The dark gray is what you're not using. And you can get rid of those down to a certain size to just give it a better look. So I hope this helps you get started on creating your own lesson plan with Symbaloo. If you want to modify one that you've found in the marketplace, be sure to check out the other video with tips and ideas on how to do that.